So hello, this is Nilanjana Basu, and today we have with us the Chief Strategy Officer of uh, Group M South Asia, Mr. Parthasarthi, and the country head of MMA India, Ms. Monica Kurana. So uh, welcome both of you to the show, and thank you for this opportunity. Um, Group M and MMA have come up with a report, which is called the Modern Marketer's Guide for Transforming Marketers. Today, we are going to discuss that in detail and, you know, talk about the changing landscape of the marketing world. Uh, so my first uh, question is uh, for Maps. So Maps, could you tell us a little bit on in terms of details of the Group M and MMA report and uh, give us a, an understanding of what it is exactly? Yeah, so so the theme of this uh, report is uh, on transforming to thrive. Uh, and what we are saying here is that there have been a, a period of tremendous uncertainty, you know, just when we thought we were out of the entire COVID uh, uh, debacle, uh, you know, there's been lots more uncertainty, whether it's inflation, war, so on and so forth. And at the same time, there have been lots of advancements as well, right? Whether it's in terms of technology, whether it's in terms of consumer behavior and so on. So the entire uh, aim of this is to literally uh, look at, uh, you know, how can how companies and brands are, uh, are looking to transform in right. order to not just survive, but also thrive in this, in this new age. Right. So um, Monica, could you tell us what were the intentions and how this collaboration, you know, happened uh, for this report? Absolutely, absolutely. Would love to. In fact, it's one of our favorite projects of the year. We've been doing this for the last four years. We call it our annual marquee report. Uh, the the way it is, uh, you know, uh, positioned is it's called the Modern Marketing Reckoner, which is an initiative by MMA and Group M. Right. And what it typically does is it reflects the sentiments and the views of the industry for that given year and acts as a reminder of the key narrative we are collectively pursuing as a community. OK, which for this year happens to be transformed to thrive, like Map said. And the reason why it's transformed to thrive, because there have been a lot of macroeconomic factors uh, which have really sort of uh, forced the, uh, the industry to really relook hard and uh, transform at a very accelerated pace, right? right? So even when we did the study, uh, you know, there were three top factors which came out as the need to transform and to think, uh, you know, uh, very, very out of the box to be able to thrive. And those three, like one of the factors Maps mentioned was, of course, COVID. Uh, second being the pace at which technology is in evolving. And third being the shift in the consumer mind set itself right so these three have been extremely potent reasons why the need to transform to thrive as a narrative just lands perfectly right so that's the context to why this report and why the theme that we came up with right so uh, we're just hoping that through this report uh, we're able to help the industry upgrade their digital maturity right by picking up a lot of expert advice by by really learning from a lot of early adopters who have done a great job of transforming at a rapid pace and have been able to thrive in a very very evolving uh, environment right so that's essentially the context of the report and why we are doing it and we, we we do believe that it can definitely be a very very uh, you know a very rich handbook uh, and a, a very useful, uh, you know, toolkit for the industry to be able to consume uh, to drive their transformational strategy for the year. Right. All right. Thank you, Monica. Uh, the second question that I have, which is more of an industry specific thing, and uh, I'm sure like a lot of uh, brands and a lot of marketers would want to know this. So uh, as marketers, like people have a lot of bundles to play with, right? So Monica, this is uh, something that I want you to answer first. Uh, yeah. What do you think is the most uh, important investment in marketing today? Like there are lots of scope, but what do you think should be a very important investment? Okay. Uh, I may sound a little unpredictable out here, but my answer, uh, I will break into two parts. Uh, the first part uh, to answer what you said, what is the most important bundle to invest into uh, for marketers? And I would say, the marketers themselves. 
So primarily, it's the need for marketers to be to become full stack marketers, right? right? Who are who are not only doing what a marketer does, but who are able to drive performance using data and technology at the heart of it, and yet build the brand and the reputation with uh, with storytelling, with design, with cultural nuance, and with of course better and evolved creative uh, tools. Right. Right. So a it's important that we the the marketers themselves invest into becoming full stack marketers right and which is only going to be possible uh, by the back of you know indulging in a lot of skilling in a lot of learning in a lot of thought leadership right because they are not really you know the sidecar of a motorcycle as i would put it right they're really the engine that's driving it so therefore they have to be uh, you know driving transformation uh, very, very, very uh, actively and quickly. Okay. So that's one area. And the second area, which, uh, which we can't ignore is investing into data stacks, right? So when we say data stacks, it's not investing literally only into collecting data, but it's investing into the entire ecosystem of building a, a very, very rock solid, robust data driven strategy, data driven, uh, you know, approach to business, right? Be it data capabilities, be it privacy solutions, be it governance, be it better ways of collecting and managing data or improving customer experience, right? So all of that would comprise data stacks which one uh, which marketers do need to invest into as a bundle and not in silo and look at it as a long term uh, you know investment right uh, maps do you have a different stance on this no i think i i agree wholeheartedly with uh, what monica has mentioned hmm. i think uh, you know uh, almost like a, a a double click on the same thing i think uh, there's one investment which is never given enough priority in my opinion and that's the investment into test and learn uh, you know, as we move into an era of more and more volatility, right? Uh, the only way for marketers to thrive will be to have a very strong test and learn process mm -hmm. and a kind of a culture of test and learn. And there is an investment required. There's a financial investment as well, which is required in that test and learn. And it's about, you know, learning about consumer, trying to learn about what works, every aspect, measuring each and every aspect and plowing back that learnings. Because very often we see even today that learnings are in the head of individuals and not institutionalized. Mm -hmm. So part of that data stack, which Monica spoke about, is also about capturing all of this, you know, doing the analytics on it and making sure it's plowed back into every subsequent action. Right. Uh, so do you want to talk a little bit about how you can manage manage the data that is out there? Because there's a lot of data and there is a lot of tech that is, uh, you know, helping with that data. So how do you manage to protect all of it and like, you know, you use it in the right way? So Monica, you want to go first and I can, I can. Of then... course. Sure. Sure, we could. Uh, okay, so uh, your question is, how do we use it in the right way? So yes, uh, it's extremely crucial. And we as a trade body totally sort of front end uh, the narrative of uh, enabling a very privacy safe approach of, uh, you know, of using data uh, and cust and consumer information for business growth, right? So, uh, of course, there is a need to uh, invest into a lot of privacy safe measures into privacy solutions, which can, uh, use, which can keep customer data safe, and which can keep the trust of the customer very high with the brand, right? The moment the trust drops, you, uh, you know, the, the entire, uh, you know, relationship uh, just sort of uh, can, uh, you know, kind of become uh, sort of a, a break, uh, you know, it can just break a relationship between the customer and the organization. So to build the trust, privacy solutions and privacy safe measures are extremely important. One cannot procrastinate it. Uh, and also, organizations need to see it as a journey you know privacy safety privacy and safety is a journey and like we've been talking a lot about data maturity privacy maturity itself is a journey along with data maturity right it there is one uh, track of really 
managing your data well, getting your communicate, getting the targeted communication in place, knowing which cohort to reach out to, how to personalize, but to do it in a privacy safe manner and to be uh, to to continue growing in your maturity journey for, uh, towards privacy, whether it is improving governance, whether it is getting better compliance, whether it is investing into solutions that can enhance privacy stack, uh, you know, uh, uh, privacy as a uh, you know as a key area is extremely important. In fact, there is some research which MMA did uh, on specifically privacy and pers and uh, personalization. So pr primarily, how do you ensure that you are able to drive personalization by being responsible and privacy safe, right? And we, we've had, uh, you know, insights from, uh, you know, from, uh, from the marketers who have mentioned that 89% of them already have put together some policies and processes to be able to safeguard consumer data better. 58% are already working at building very robust strategies to use, uh, you know, 1P data effectively, right? However, there are still gaps and there are still there is still a, a lot of room to improve uh, when it comes to maturing in privacy and when it comes to doing more uh, you know integrated communication with the data organizations have uh, versus uh, you know maybe just uh, working on only the uh, you know sort of nurturing the 1p data how do you sort of marry it with 2p data 3p data those are areas which still need to sort of come together to be able to really uh, you know, uh, probably build something that I would call a bet better data symphony of sorts. Yeah. I think I think uh, I think Monica covered the entire gamut from the from the kind of governance uh, uh, standpoint, and I think those are very important. I think the only add-on I would do to that is from the consumer lens, right? I think I think the most important point is consent. Uh, and, you know, in any form of data capture of the consumer, it has to be with complete and transparent consent. Uh, and we we work with a lot of clients, you know, in terms of helping them with data acquisition, data enrichment, data deployment. And always the core principle is uh, is one of consent. The second is, I think there always has to be a strong value exchange. You know, what is the consumer getting in exchange for what they are giving? Uh, and I think that value exchange, when it is when it's laid out in a very transparent manner, very clear, I think uh, that also helps a lot. And finally, I think the third point is uh, just because you can, it doesn't mean you must. And this is a philosophy which we follow very strongly. Collect only the data which is absolutely necessary, which can actually add value back to the consumers while adding value back to the organization. I think these are three principles which uh, I think are very important. Yeah, that is very important. Thank you so much. Uh, and uh, the next question is for Maps. Um, so what kind of percentage ad spend growth have you seen from Indian companies in the last two years? And what does the future look like for India as a market? See, I think uh, I'll start off by giving a, a perspective of India as part of the globe. Uh, you know, India today is the eighth largest ADEX market in the globe. Yeah. Uh, and uh, it was 10th not not too long ago uh, and it's moved to the eighth position uh, and uh, more important than that it is by far the fastest growing adx market in the world uh, our uh, uh, group m has the this year next year report which we publish every year and uh, you know in 2023 the expected growth is around uh, just ahead of 15% as per our February estimates. Obviously, we keep calibrating it periodically and so on. Now, last year as well, it was about 15.7% when we look at 22 over 21. So it's extremely robust while the overall entire world is, is growing at perhaps half that speed. Mm -hmm. uh, you know? So I think that's the important point. And uh, the second point is even when you look forward into a period up to 2027, uh, we are looking at a CAGR growth of uh, anywhere in the region of 12 to 14 uh, percent. Uh, so this market is projected to continue to grow, continue to grow ahead of global uh, uh, levels. And uh, also the other interesting thing is uh, till date, I mean, if I look at 2023, it's the only market perhaps among the large markets where every form of media is growing, uh, you know, uh, digital, TV, print radio, cinema, out of home. So, so I think those are positive indicators. 
and uh, and that's that's how marketers are uh, are uh, also kind of uh, increasing their uh, investments right uh, so monica the next question is for you so sure. what kind of uh, marketing trends do you think uh, brands need to you know keep an eye out for for the next uh, you know rest of the year and the next year absolutely i think this is uh, totally a question which we uh, you know kind of like to answer because you know as a body we are all about shaping the future of modern marketing and we do want to make sure that marketers are always uh, you know, future proofing their strategy and approach when it comes to, uh, you know, marketing. So, uh, you know, we a while back were speaking about AI uh, and uh, when AI obviously has multiple use cases and they will only keep growing. But when we talk about AI for marketing, there are clearly, uh, you know, some very strong trends which uh, are emerging and which are also uh, already showing immense success, right? So, for right. example, enabling AI powered personalization right that's a very big trend whether it is through communication through media through creative uh, through influencer marketing but enabling ai powered personalization is a very key trend to a point where it's already for one of the global reports that mma released uh, some part of the, of uh, last quarter it's already shown that uh, when you deploy ai powered personalization you would see a 25% increase in your customer retention and you would see a 20% growth in revenue so obviously it is a trend which is not just a good to have trend and a new shiny object but a trend which genuinely has a lot of business impact right so that's one uh, second is even when you look at ai uh, from a lens of influencer marketing there is a lot of uh, you know experimentation happening on creating ai avatars and you know uh, creating ways where you could use influencers and ambassadors uh, multiculturally multilingually and that also is a very very big trend right uh the third is uh that i wouldn't even actually call it a trend it's i would call it as oxygen for businesses and that's basically about having a, dri a driving data dri a data first marketing uh right. where you're continuously finding ways of leveraging uh data whether it is your own data whether it is second party data whether it's third party data or blended data but leveraging data effectively to drive marketing and growth right and lastly i would call out ondc as one big emerging trend which mma is also been championing and has actually uh, launched the narrative at the beginning of this year at the beginning of this year where we actually put out a very very uh, you know elaborate narrative on decoding ondc and we will continue doing it at our upcoming initiatives which we are in the process of uh, on unveiling which is our uh, you know annual event impact which happens in bombay and delhi uh, on in may and june uh, where we will again uh, represent a lot of understanding on ondc where it's way beyond just a trend it's how the principles of unbundling and interoperability are really playing out in a very big way uh, and uh, enabling businesses to drive growth and businesses of all all shapes and sizes and all categories which one otherwise wouldn't imagine being a part of a commerce ecosystem right so right. these are the four big trends i would call out right so uh, we talked a lot about ai and tech for that matter so this brings me to my last question and this is open to both of you uh, yeah. what do you think is should be in the in the future the focus of uh, marketers should it be creative or should it be tech like which is the uh, which is the big deal here right now so maybe maybe i'll have the first crack at that one <laughs> <laughs> Because, because I think when you look at any of the trends, whatever Monica has spoken about, and there are a number of other trends as well, which are which are very important. And it's always a confluence of a change in consumer behavior and a change in technology. Okay. You know, and those two coming together is is what's going to happen. I I will uh, not even break things up into creative and media anymore. I think you know it as well as I do that the the message and the medium are now inseparable. Uh, but I think uh, uh, I think what is important is to leverage these trends uh, in in the best manner possible, you know. And it goes back to my test and learn, uh, because you're never going to get it right the first time. Right. Sorry, Monica, your your points. Fabulous, as well. makes so much sense. Makes so much <laughs> sense. Uh, no, I think I I only second what you said. And uh, the reality is, you know, if I have to simply put 
the same thing it's like you have to be where the consumer is right like a marketer didn't want ever think of advertising on social media platforms but then there was a huge huge mar critical mass there and one sort of just had to be there right same thing happened when tiktok came uh, you know into the country same thing is happening now uh, you know in different other ways where uh, talk about even something like chat gpt right like today everybody the consumers are there so i'm sure marketers will find a way to seed content and connect with consumers in different organic ways uh, with time right so it's just about following where the consumer goes so you got to adopt a medium where the consumer is going and where you are beginning to see critical mass making it worthwhile enough to make it a part of your uh, marketing strategy and plan right thank you so much uh... Maps and Monica for your time, and this has been a great chat. Absolutely, thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.